Hi, this is Rob Shore, Director of Global Technical Sales for Corient. In this video, what I want to take a look at is packet-based transport network and some of the benefits those networks can provide. In a previous video, we looked at the difference between circuit-based networks and packet-based networks. Now, there are some advantages circuit-based networks can provide, uh, but this video is going to focus very specifically on the benefits that are provided by packet-based networks, which are actually fairly substantial and numerous. Now, the three primary benefits that a packet-based transport infrastructure will provide over a circuit-based infrastructure uh, start with transport efficiency, so enabling a more efficient transport network itself. On top of that, one of the big benefits that packet-based networks will provide is not just in the transport network, but in all the devices connected to the transport network, in particular for routers. So as routers connect to the transport network, packet-based networks can significantly improve the efficiency of those router interfaces. And finally, there's a variety of different things that packet networks can provide uh, when offering business services and providing differentiation on those service offerings. So let's get into it. The first thing I want to look at is what are some of the limitations for circuit-based networks that struggle with providing some of those benefits I mentioned on the previous uh, graphic. So the real primary issue with cir circuit-based networks is this. This is what I call per-port service-based mapping. What I mean by that is when you go into a circuit-based transport node, the only thing a circuit-based transport device can do is take all the traffic that comes in on a single port, and it has to take all of that traffic, every ounce of it, and put it into a single container. All the traffic from that port goes into a single container. That container now can only have a single destination. Yeah, I can broadcast things, but in general, this container will have a single destination. So essentially what I'm doing is creating a single physical port to a single individual destination. Okay, so from a network perspective, let's take a look at some of the challenges that causes in the network. So let's say I have these services in a network I want to provide out to the edge of my network, right? Let's say VPN services, uh, internet, video services. The idea now is I can put a router here to aggregate those, right? So I want to try to create individual traffic flows for each destination. The problem, though, is coming off of this router, because my transport network needs separate physical interfaces per destination, it's also going to force the router to have a separate physical interface for each destination. Because I can't hand trend the transport network, a circuit-based transport network, an aggregated interface, because I can't break it apart. So this is a big problem, and one of the issues with this, of course, is that, you know, traffic demands themselves are very bursty. Especially I'm combining internet, VPN, video traffic, the traffic goes up and down. But because I have a single physical interface per destination, I need to size that interface based on the peak requirements of my destination so I don't drop traffic, right? So beyond that, it's not just the peak of the uh, requirement of the destination, it's actually the peak rounded up. So what do I mean, round it up? What I mean is that if this destination over here requires 6 gig, right, the peak utilization, peak requirements is 6 gig, well, what kind of interface am I going to buy? I'm going to buy a 10 gig interface. So I've taken the peak requirements and I've rounded it up to the nearest physical interface of 10 gig. And so essentially what I'm doing now is I'm building a network that's the sum of the peak requirements of every destination rounded up to the nearest physical interface. So again, you can think, even you know, in one interface here, if I need 6 gig and I'm buying a 10 gig interface, already I'm at 60% utilization. 40% of my capacity of that port goes unutilized. And really, when you look at it, what you end up with is, is networks that are based on circuit-based transport solutions that have an average utilization of, of less than 50%, in some cases significantly less than 50%. And again, the key issue here is it's based on a transport network that's going to require a separate physical interface for each destination that I need to transmit traffic between. And this is just in the core of the network. This problem is actually even worse as I get to the edge of the network. Because now that I've aggregated this traffic, right, I've got a single aggregated handoff from the router that's all on this purple wavelength going to this destination. Because that's on a single aggregated handoff, right, let's say it's 10 gig worth of traffic going to this destination. Because this transport node, this circuit-based transport node at this destination, it can't break up that 10 gig. And if I have multiple edge devices, which I typically do, that I need to get that traffic between, I actually need to buy another router at that intermediate location there. And I'm going to hand this 10 gig interface off to that router, which is going to, then going to break up the traffic into these different edge devices I need to get to. So I need an additional router there to break up that traffic. And now it gets even worse, because if I have an edge part of my network, let's say I have an access ring here that hits three different locations, 
Remember, the handoffs from this router, I need a separate physical interface for each one of these individual destinations. And if this is a circuit-based network, I have to break that circuit into these individual different little pipes. So now I'm creating a separate physical interface with separate pipes. And again, just like in the core of my network, each of these pipes and each of these interfaces needs to be based on the peak requirements of each destination rounded up. So again, now end to end in my network, I'm buying capacity on the transport network and router interfaces based on a sum of the peak requirements of every destination in my network. And on the edge of the network, because I have less locations I'm sharing the bandwidth between, this traffic is even more bursty than it is in the core, leading to utilization levels of well below 30%. Meaning 70% of the stuff I buy at the edge of my network, I'm not using. I'm basically wasting 70% of what I buy at the edge of my network. And this is the issue with circuit-based networks. And the whole idea, the whole issue here, all centers around this concept of requiring a separate physical interface for every end destination. So packet networks overcome this challenge, right? Packet networks overcome this challenge because I can look at the traffic inside this physical interface and I can do per flow based mapping. So now as traffic comes in, I can look at the labels on the overhead. And, and again, I use the word label. Uh, what I mean, right, it could be a VLAN, MPLS, TP, MAC address, right, a variety of different types of labels, just using the generic term label. But the idea is I can look at the labels of the incoming frames on this, on this physical interface, and I can steer that traffic to a variety of different destinations, all from a single physical aggregated interface. If, so again, if I look at this from the same overall network architecture, delivering the same services, right, internet, video, uh, uh, business services, now when that traffic comes into my router, the router can take all of these different services together for all of the different destinations and aggregate them all into a single physical interface and hand to the transport network. Then the transport network can take that single physical interface and break it up to the different destinations as necessary. So this will have a huge impact on the efficiency of my network and the number of router ports that I need. Right? So even, even if I don't oversubscribe it, right? So if I still base the network based on a peak requirements of each destination, just by what I call right sizing these pipes. So in other words, if I have uh, three destinations here that each need six gig, if I had a circuit based network because I need separate physical interfaces, I would buy three 10 gig interfaces for my three destinations. With a packet based network, because I can aggregate those into a single interface, I can still base it off the peak requirements, so no oversubscription, no real packet management on the, on the transport network. But because I can provide this aggregated handoff, I can do that on two 10 gig interfaces, right? It's still a total of 18 gig, but I can do it on two 10 gig interfaces. So even with no oversubscription whatsoever, right away you've just saved 30% of your router ports. I can buy 30% fewer router ports just by right sizing my traffic. So just that by itself can significantly improve the efficiency and the utilization of your network. Now if I want to get into oversubscription, right, where I maybe you know, have 10 gig coming in and I might have 30 gig worth of bandwidth I need to provide and I'm going to oversubscribe and packet manage it, with that you can get utilizations all the way up to about 85% pretty reliably. Of course there are additional uh, additional things that need to be managed in the network. You got on the transport network, you have to add prioritization and queuing and things like that. Uh, now these are relatively easy to implement, but it is one extra step. But that'll get you even more efficiency in the network. And again, where am I really saving the, uh, saving the money on this? It's not so much in the transport network. It's really most of the benefit is being achieved on the router by being able to buy fewer router interfaces. And this is the whole idea is that the transport network, a packet based transport network can provide more efficiency in transport, yes, but also in the devices connected to the transport network. And now this benefit that I got in the core of my network, it's even more pronounced as I get to the edge of my network. Because remember in the edge of the network of a circuit based network, I needed to buy this router here because I needed something that could break up this aggregated interface, this aggregated traffic flow into the different edge devices I need to connect to. But of course, now that I have a packet-based transport solution, I don't need that router, intermediate router anymore for that purpose. I can still have a router there for uh, providing certain kinds of services, but I don't need to waste the resources on those routers just to break up these service flows. I can do that directly on the transport device itself and now connect directly to my various edge devices. And similarly, now that at the very edge of my network in the access part, because these are packet-based rings, 
First of all, I can provide a single aggregated handoff to support all the traffic for these three destinations. But because that's now a shared pipe, I can provide much more flexible services at the edge there, right? I can use all of the bandwidth for any of these locations. So I'll get a certain amount of additional efficiency just by right sizing the pipes, right? No oversubscription at all, but just basing it on the right sizing uh, of the amount of bandwidth required for each of those services. And I can get really up to from 30% on circuit-based networks up to 60% utilization with packet-based just based on right sizing. But if I want to oversubscribe this as well, now I can get up to 75% utilization on average at the edge of the network. So again, the idea is I can have a single 10 gig ring here, but I can sell actually 10 gig of services to each one of these customers with the expectation that they're not all going to use it at once. Or I can sell them, you know, let's say each 3 gig of dedicated bandwidth and then additional 7 gig worth of burst bandwidth. All right, so again, I can sell better, more effective uh, services for my end customer and I can generate more revenue using the same physical interfaces uh, in my network. So no extra cost in the network to provide that. So again, I look back on the real benefit that packet-based transport network provides in terms of improving efficiency in the network. It's less on the transport side and more on the devices connected to the transport network by enabling more efficient handoffs, so I need fewer interfaces, fewer handoffs from other devices, or being able to offer more services with the same resources that I have. And this is where a lot of network operators end up getting into problems because when they do their studies of what transport network they're going to choose, you know, are we going to go circuit or am I going to go packet, a lot of times they constrain that study to just the transport network itself. And they don't consider all of the benefits that a packet-based transport solution will have on the devices connected to the transport network. So again, one of the things I want to highlight here and maybe expand when, you, when one does network studies is to make sure you're including not just the cost of the transport equipment itself, but also include the cost of the devices connected to the transport network. And I think in most cases, you'll find a significant savings uh, when building packet-based transport networks. Now, this is just on the efficiency side of things. There's another significant benefit that packet-based transport networks can provide. And this is in being able to manage traffic flows a variety of different ways. So looking at the core of the network, one of the things I can do is, right, is I can prioritize this traffic based on flow. So each one of these different services coming into my network, the VPN, the internet video, they're all going to be marked differently. And when those hit the transport network, I can prioritize them differently. So if I want to oversubscribe in this part of my network, my transport network can prioritize video over internet or VPNs over both. So I can ensure I get a reliable services even with oversubscribed interfaces. So the idea is I can get even additional efficiency by oversubscribing and then use traffic management to ensure I get the consistent service, uh, consistent performance for the services I need. This is a big thing that circuit networks can't do because circuit networks, they can't differentiate services on an individual port. All the traffic on that one physical port is all handled the same way. So if I want different levels of service, I need to create different pipes, different physical interfaces on my, my circuit-based transport network. With a packet network, I can do that same thing, but all from a single physical interface. Now, on the core of the network, there's some advantages, although I do have routers there that can also do some of this prioritization. So where I think it makes even more benefit, or where packet networks provide even more benefit, is at the edge of the network where I'm providing business services. Now what I can do is I can provide differentiated services to my end customers, all from the same single physical interface. So first off, I can use that prioritization concept, the ability to prioritize different traffic flows on the same physical interface. I can implement that for business services as well. So I can provide a single physical interface, and I can then prioritize those traffics, different services on that interface differently. So let's say they've got you know, uh, basic internet surfing and some mission critical traffic, right? I can prioritize those differently. This again can enable me to sell differentiated services to that customer. I can provide them more services for the same price, enable me to uh, beat some of my competition in winning that customer's business uh, by, by, by saying, hey, here's a 10 gig interface. I'm going to give you 3 gig of constant bit rate uh, you know, guaranteed traffic. And, but I, you can do the, the whole rest of it can be bursty traffic. So again, the idea is I can sell differentiated services, more services uh, with the same physical interface. And that's just the prioritization of the services. There's another big benefit that packet-based transport networks can provide for business services. Not only can I prioritize that, but because I'm looking at this traffic on a label-by-label -label basis, 
I can actually steer that traffic in different directions from the same physical interface. So if my customer says, hey, I've got a couple new locations, hey, great, I bought this internet service from you, and that's all up and working great. Now I've got a couple new locations that I'm opening up, and I want to get traffic to those locations. You can actually provide connectivity from this one single physical interface that they're already buying to these new locations simply by steering the frames destined for those locations through the network to those locations. So again, the idea is I can do all of this from a single physical interface, handle traffic differently based on the type of uh, traffic the customer's transporting, the different types of service they have on that single physical interface, and get that traffic to different destinations all within the transport network itself. And I can do this without having to backhaul this traffic all the way back to some centralized point in the network to break that traffic up and then send it back out again. So again, I can do things much more efficiently. I can offer differentiated services to my customers. And I can help grow with my customers as they need new types of services. A packet network can adapt much more readily and much more efficiently and much more quickly uh, to meet those customers' needs. So this basically are the three primary benefits that you get from packet-based transport solutions over circuit-based solutions. We looked at transport efficiency. This is the ability to right size pipes, so I'm not buying bigger interfaces or bigger transport pipes that I need. The ability to share the pipes. Just a single big giant pipe and all the traffic is shared in between it. I don't have to designate little sections of that fixed bandwidth to different locations, right? So I can use my transport capacity more efficiently. And perhaps even more importantly, all the devices connected to the transport network, those interfaces could be much more efficient, right? And typically, by the way, routers in particular, these are some of the most expensive interfaces in the network. So by building a packet-based transport network, I can actually save a quite a bit of money on my network just by using my router interfaces more effectively, right? We're not getting rid of routers, we're not bypassing, none of that, but just by using those interfaces more efficiently, you can save a huge amount of money, even without doing any oversubscription on the transport network, just by right-sizing the pipes. And of course, if you do oversubscribe, I can add traffic management to the transport network and prioritization and queuing, and I can get even more efficiencies out of my router network. And finally, of course, is a service differentiation. The ability to take a single physical interface from my end customer and provide different levels of service for different of their types of traffic needs, and to more easily and flexibly connect to more locations to handle more bursty traffic, really to be more dynamic with the services I offer them. This can help me not only beat my competition and win that customer, but it can also help me grow and evolve those customer services over time. Right? I can upsell them new services, as their network uh, demands change and their service needs change, I can much, easily, much more easily sell new services to that customer. So this is the concept, right? These are the key benefits of packet-based transport networks. And of course, Corient is very heavily invested in packet-based transport solutions, and we have a very broad suite of transport, packet-based transport solutions. Uh, and if you're interested in hearing more about any of those solutions, uh, please come and visit us at, at Corient.com, or check out some of our other videos on some of our packet-based solutions, uh, or even one of our videos on a, on a unique concept from Corient called Universal Transport Solutions, based on our mTerra platform. So again, if you have any other questions or want any more information, please visit us at corient.com. That comes to the end of our video. Hope you enjoyed it, and thanks for watching.